Or is it just this part? She wants to talk. I think it's the Wyoming District Park. District Park, yeah. District Park. Aloha. Hello, everybody. Um, we don't have that many people signed up to comment yet, so we're going to take about five minutes. Can't hear? Okay, that's here. So we're going to give people about five more minutes to come on in. Um, so please look at the posters if you're doing so, stay over there. If you haven't had a chance to do so, please do so over there. Um, and then about five minutes, we'll get started with the formal portion of the meeting. Mahalo nui, everybody, for coming. Aloha everyone, we're going to get started. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I'm Kehal watson Spur. I'm just facilitating this evening, so thank you everyone for coming. I know you've taken time out of your evenings to be here. Um, this is the Waimea District Park, beautiful facility, um, new to many of us, so we've not been here before. If you need the restrooms, they're right outside that exit door that's open to the left. So there's both restroom facilities are there. Um, if you're feeling peckish, we have some snacks. So please, um, for kids, young and old, um, we have stuff. So please feel free to just grab something if you just want to throw something to snack on. Um, and again, if you've not done so, there are posters along that wall. I apologize, they're a little far, but it gets very windy through here. So 
that was the best place we could have it where the wooded fall over or knock over would be a distraction. Um, so we are going to get started. I'm very happy to introduce Commander of the U.S. Army Garrison, Hawaii, Colonel Dan Misselboy. Mahalo. Mahalo. Hello, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, I've already introduced me. I'm Dan Misselboy. I'm the Commander of U.S. Army Garrison, Hawaii. I'm, I'm, my headquarters is, is on Oahu. I'm usually located in Schofield Barracks. And I came out here for uh, this public meeting on the draft environmental impact statement on the Army's uh, you know, initiative to retain training lands at Oahu training area. So uh, for some information up front, so we're following the National Environmental Policy Act and Hawaii Environmental Policy Act process uh, as we determine uh, what the Army wants to do uh, with the 23,000 uh, acres of state leased land uh, that the Army has leased uh, for 65 years, ending in 2029. So uh, we're in the first part of the process, which is that uh, environmental impact uh, study pro uh, part of the process, and part of that is collecting comments. We're doing that here tonight. We did that last night uh, in Hilo, and we're going to continue to collect comments. We'll uh, go through different methods, email, regular mail, uh, phone call here tonight, as well as submitting written comments through uh, the 7th of June. So in the environmental impact statement, uh, there's multiple alternatives that the Army is looking at, everything from full retention being uh, retention of 23,000 acres. That's just the what, not the how. Uh, that real estate action comes later. Uh, to minimal retention, which is and just access uh, to the no action alternative, which would mean that uh, the leases end, the, those lease lands go back to the state, and then all programs that are going on in the federal land uh, would uh, end at that point. So a little bit of information about Kalakaloa training area. So uh, PTA is the premier training area for the Army here in the Pacific, uh, but it's more than just that. It's not just the Army here. Uh, it is also the Marines and the other services. Uh, it is also the Hawaii National Guard. All uh, Hawaii National Guardsmen come and train here uh, throughout the year, uh, both their weekend training and their annual training as well as county emergency services coming to Pahakaloa and training as well. Um, and then taking it beyond just here uh, to the Indo-Pacific region, uh, the Army, the Marine, we do bring our uh, allies and partner nations here to train with us. Uh, and we trained our, our high state of readiness and then go out into the region as well and train with our partners, really developing uh, that security and that partnership for a state, stable Pacific. So tonight's meeting, as I said, is we're here to listen to you. Uh, we're here to get comments on the environmental impact statement. Uh, then we'll come up, we'll uh, come up to the microphone here. Uh, okay, now we'll, we'll go through we'll this here in a second, so I'm still in her thunder. Uh, <laughs> you'll come up, we'll get three minutes to, to give comments. Uh, and then if we have time afterwards, we'll bring you up a second time if you, if you so desire to get additional comments. And then I want to highlight finally the other ways that you can comment. So we do have in the middle uh, a table set up for written comments, and you can write in your comments. Give them a moment, hey, home, hold another arm here a second ago. Uh, and then we also have a couple phones. We have a phone line that is open that you can call and we'll record your comments. And then the comments that you make here, uh, we have both, you're being recorded, uh, it is being recorded on YouTube, and then as well as we got our or uh, court report that is captured that. And all the comments captured here, everything you that's mailed in, and all of those bit. comments it will then become part of the draft EIS, yeah. and it will get updated to address comments appropriately. Thank you. Aloha. My name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Cronin, and I've been the Garrison Commander of Kalakaloa Training Area for about 11 months now. And I just uh, want to start off by saying welcome. Um, we're in the draft environmental impact uh, stage uh, phase 
of this process where that draft environmental statement has been released to the public for a 60 day public comment period. And we very much welcome and appreciate your comments. It's, uh, it's important to us and it's important to the process. So obviously tonight is an in-person opportunity to provide comments to us, which we look forward to, but just like Kermit and Boyd said, there's a wide variety of other opportunities to provide comments throughout this process. Um, so thank you in advance. We're looking forward uh, to all of your comments. I, I oversee the actual training base on Hawaii Island that includes the lease plan. At PTA, we help ensure America's Army, its men and women in uniform, are trained to the highest standards, achieve the highest levels of readiness, and are prepared to defend our nation. This includes all the services of our military, including our own Hawaii Zone, Army Reserve, the, the famed 100th Battalion, and the Hawaiian Army National Guard and the Hawaiian uh, Air National Guard. Hawaii is important to the military, and the military is important to Hawaii. Because of its location, the state of Hawaii is vital for national defense as a logistics hub and for rapid troop deployment. Hawaii's unique Pacific training environments cannot be replicated in any other U.S. state and are critical to prepare troops to fight as they train, which is both an operational imperative and a sacred obligation. The U.S. military employs over 71,000 personnel in the state and spends approximately $7.5 billion in Hawaii each year, more than half of them in personnel wages. PTA is very important to local DOD and law enforcement training in Hawaii as well. PTA is used by the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Army Reserve, Hawaii Army and Air National Guard, as well as state and local government agencies, such as the Hawaii Police Department, Hawaii Civil Defense Agency, State Office of Homeland Security, Hawaii Fire Department and Emergency First Responders, and Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. PTA is particularly important to the U.S. military because it is the only area in Hawaii that supports larger unit collective live fire and maneuver training. PTA is the largest contiguous live fire range and maneuver training area in Hawaii, the primary tactical training area for Hawaii based units and the only training area in Hawaii able to support weapon system training and maximum capabilities. PTA supports joint and multinational exercises to ensure that the U.S. military and allied nations could effectively work together and increase interoperability throughout the Pacific region. The Army is a steward of PTA resources as well. The Army's Hawaii National Resources Staff manages and protects more than 100 threatened and endangered species. The Army's Hawaii Cultural Resources Staff manages and protects more than 2,100 archaeological sites and historic structures. The Army in Hawaii has a specialized wildland fire division in support of its natural resources program. It is the only dedicated Army wildland fire school in the country. The Army protects training land in Hawaii by investing over $12 million annually in environmental stewardship. Environmental training and soldier orientation is mandatory for units to train on Army training areas in Hawaii. We are proud of our incredible training base at CCA, and the lease land is vital to the training that happens there. Understanding and knowing the land is essential to analyzing the future of these critical parcels. We look forward to your comments on the draft you yeah, asked. Again, we very much welcome your comments. And thank you for your time. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay, so um, we had a timer last night that was set to two minutes, but we have a smaller number of people signed up to comment. So we're going to do what we did last night, um, which is we're going to start with three minutes. And then, as they said, um, we're going to give you the three minutes. We're going to have everybody who signed up to give comments. We're going to go through them. We'll call you up by number. And then we'll ask anybody who else who didn't sign up that would like to provide comments. I see some people from last night are absolutely welcome to come up again and give comments tonight. Um, and then, if there's anybody who wants to go up a second time, 
will absolutely invite you up to do so as soon as we have time at the end of this, and I think we will. Um, just in between, so you know, Matt will be coming to wipe the microphone just to keep everybody safe. <laughs> and then, um, so you have to give him a minute to do that because he turns off the microphone when he comes to clean it, so we're not all blasted by the sound of that. And then we'll give you a signal that we've turned it off. Please come up, get as close to the microphone that you are comfortable doing so. Um, state your name, spell your name, and then once you've done that, I'll start the three minutes. Um, state your name. State your name. What did I say? State my name? Yeah, okay, sorry, 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 state yeah. your name. Don't state my name. No, no, you didn't introduce yourself. Well, I did. Oh, I'm Keiko Watson Spur. Sorry, that's my husband. He's, you know, we're going to get there. Sorry. Um, it's going to be a little entertaining if you have a husband and wife up here. So, um, mm -hmm. mahalo everybody for coming. Really we're going to start with number 21. I love it. So, if you have number 21, please come up. Take your name, spell your name, and then you can start. Mahalo. Good evening. My name is Lance, he L A N C E S E D E N S. And I'm born and raised in one year. And I'm a coming support of the renewal of the peace lands. And that's because I got, you know, 27 years I worked up there. I worked with an awesome bunch of people. And I know we got the environmental impact statement and all the information I see. It. I see these guys work hard. We work with a great team, the environmental group, EPW, police, fire, <clears throat> and everyone else that's up there to ensure that our troops train safely, that everything is done the, the correct way in accordance with our mandate from Congress and that they follow the rules. And you know, I got to enforce that as a police officer up there and making sure they do what they're supposed to do. I mean, of course, you know, our commanders, as big as they are, they come in two years, maybe three years if they love me. But us guys that get to work up there and, then, and work with the soldiers, work with the Marines, the Navy, and the Air Force, and HPD, and other law enforcement, the FBI, it's awesome training for us. And that's to make sure that we can provide a safe environment, we serve and protect, and we ensure that, you know, I was raised by a dad that served in the army, he's in a paratrooper unit, fought in a Korean war, and he, he always instilled in us, well, whatever job you do, you do the best that you can. And, and that's, I'm so grateful, I've been blessed, you know, God has blessed me 27 years of the field. Like, my tour of duty coming to the end, you know, you get older, things happen. So I'm off the road I'm in the admin position, but I'm going to try and do everything I can to help facilitate a good working environment, as well as the other people that I work with up there. And we want to make sure that everybody has the information they need and they do those things they need. And again, you know, um, just grateful for that opportunity. And I felt strongly. I, I worked here, that's my boss over there, but that had nothing to do with that. I just felt strongly about um, my mom and dad raised us to be, um, you know, patriotic citizens to do what we got to do. I got the opportunity to serve in the Air Force, and I might have made a career out of it, except my height and weight. They didn't match their standards. I had to be 179, and my whole service, I think I was 200, 205 pounds. So I, I got my honorable discharge, and because of that, you know, I worked at ranch. How many years? It's tough work. The pay is good, but it ain't that great. And you know, I had my family to take care of, and I think that's personal, right? But with my my reason for bringing that up is I was able to serve, I feel proud, I, I got to serve the country, I get to meet these men and women that wear their uniform and protect us, holding their oath to protect these United States and our constitution, keep it in place, to prevent these other people, um, socialists, communists, from invading. You see what's going on in Ukraine? China is threatening Taiwan. 
Is that it? Two minutes. Okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, Mahalo. Mahalo, thank you so much. Number 20. There we go. There you go. Aloha, I'm Cindy Freitas, C I N D Y, Freitas, F R E I T A S. I'm a culture practitioner from a long line of practitioners prior to 1776. Um, the EIS is unaccessible to me for one reason, for many reasons. Um, I know Shifty had recorded a lot of stuff there. 1998, the 12 pits up there. 1986, the habitation of the cave up there. 2015, the carrying stick, which I think is something else that I saw. Mm -hmm. The cordage of the kaula, which is the coconut fibers and husks. But I think you left out the bones. Our ancestors were smart people who cultivate the land, who grow food to provide for their people. And one thing about the Kuma people, they bury themselves on the land. So there's a lot of missing things in here, the seesaw, but the main important stuff is the easy, which I know is up there. And that's why I'm here today, because they call and call me to cut off. There's a lot of missing pieces up there. And that's why I feel that EIS is unacceptable. In all due respect to the PPA, I honor you guys in what you do, protect and serve. But I don't think you serve it for the people. Especially those of my ancestors who was there were before my time, way before your time, who had done what they had to do. And I can say in the provision of 711, 1107 HRF of desecration of a sacred place, a burial place, that is what that rule is. HRS 711, 1107 is what you're missing in your EIS. That's a great thing of our last. So, and I'll do this back to you guys. And mahalo for this opportunity. Mahalo. Number 23. Aloha, my name is Navani Kahoopi, N-A-W-A-H-I-N-E-K-A-H-O-O-P-I-I. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to first say that um, I don't have anything against the military. My father was a Marine, brother in law a Marine. So um, this isn't personal. But I do say no to the release. <clears throat> I um, really appreciate what I think it was you that gave the testimony and spoke about the um, national importance of our islands, the national security. And um, it almost, it upsets me when our places do it that way, that our home, where our children and our grandchildren are trying to live and thrive is seen as a place of national security. Um, in 1854, when we had the third declaratory a neutral state for that very reason. Um, we stayed neutral for conflict, and I feel that we need to remain that way for the protection of our people. 
and the protection of our culture. Um, the things that are happening right now, I think, is something else that Brother brought up about what's happening in terms of getting up on his issues in the South Pacific in China, which specifically makes our local and our army a part of it. I have just my personal opinion for him, and I'm really worried about what is happening at the Buffalo and what can happen to my community as a result of this kind of conflict being stirred up in the South Pacific. Um, my other two issues were, um, we talked about the cultural things that we take care of and the honor and we're caring for it, but we have two Kapuni here that have the sue to um, even have that place inspected. It hadn't been inspected, even though that's a contractual agreement in over 25 years. The other issue that was fought in our community for many, many years was the issue of the depleted uranium. There was finally admission of that, but then there was the insult that <clears throat> it probably wasn't dangerous. How can the uranium not be dangerous? Also, that you weren't able to um, locate exactly where those areas were where the depleted uranium units were. Um, and then finally, you have 23,000 acres of land. A land, waters, and so forth, we're importing 90% of our food. This has been an issue, again, for our people for decades about our, us becoming at least food sovereign. Now, because of the things that are being joined up in terms of conflict, not only in European areas, but also in the South Pacific, we already have shortages of food. We're going to be facing shortages of energy and so forth. And the idea that we would take more of our lands and not be concerned with feeding ourselves first and making sure that we have our own, our own energy issues taken care of is a big issue for me. Um, so this current putting of war and this, um, even our, the president admitting that we were going to be facing food shortages and there's not any offer of a solution to that, um, again, makes me say absolutely I owe to the consideration of 23,000 acres of our lands being taken up in. We can't even do this also. Thank you. Oh, two minutes perfectly. Number 24, please. Number 24. Hi, my name is Tom Penny, P E N N Y, person uh, Tom Tuan. And I would like to go on the record as opposing a renewal of the lease for the state land up in the law. And um, I think, you know, with due respect to the military, the continued bombing of land um, just it never has sat well with me. I've been a member of the community here for 42 years. Prior to that, I was on the wobble, and I remember distinctly the occupation by Hawaiians of Kaopolada. I think that stands as, as an example of people standing up and saying, enough is enough. You know, how often can we drop bombs on land without having the easiest effect on people's health, the welfare of our community, and uh, the continued peace and safety of our community. Um, That's good. That's so good. I do have a proposal for, I mean, well, we can comment first on the EIS. EIS, um, it is so well worded to help the military get across the idea that they're doing a great thing up there. And I don't believe it. I just, every time I read the phrases and how it's put, I'm just like, oh, this is, uh, this is articulation all year to make it seem like the greatest thing in the world. Well, it's not, you know, bombing land is never good. So um, I have a suggestion. I would like to see the release, uh, the release not released. And I would like you to take the next seven years to clean the mess up that you made. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Okay.
On behalf of the heirs of Moko Keabe, and tonight, um, just like last night, we had to come through, and um, I was expecting to see um, life ahead. Um, Inoy, um, maybe Suzanne Case, um, since she's part of the uh, you know, um, Ida, whereas DJ Shell, all of these partners that are surrounding the people. They should be here. They should be here for the front and center, but they're not here again. So they're just supposed to show me how serious that this conversation is. It really isn't. We cannot extend the lease no more. You guys cannot get no more dollar burgers. We don't even get dollar deals. We don't even get dollar a year. And you guys want to renegotiate and go around this whole surface of our life. And so today we come and we just need to say that these pieces cannot be extended. And I have to respect um, one of the oppositions on today to talk about the federal laws. The United States has violated how many treaties? This is an illegal occupation. And so when people say we're going to fight for our rights, there's a difference from protecting and being terrorists. You can go all over the world and be at every state to try and police people. That's a sickness. They're not gonna go and follow what they've been doing for the past 60, 100 years of just war, war, war. That's not what we're gonna do for our generation. We're not gonna allow all of these older politics who are pumping you guys up, telling you guys, you guys can get the dollar with burger. You guys can't get it no more. This is up and everything must be returned and we know you guys kind of feel that you treated your own. So you guys got a long mountain ahead of you guys, but before you guys leave, you guys got to clean up. And we would like to see that, that vision come true before any other leases can be even given out. Red Bear, the Chambers of Commerce is telling everybody to continue to drink the water while the water was contaminated. You guys sit down with the Navy head. And he had the arrogancy to tell us that you guys can trump us every day of the, of the week because you guys got the power in mind. Mm -hmm. I think it's a new era. I think war is not the way. So you guys have to be occupied and militarize the city. Mahal. Mahal. Hi, um, my name is Shanti Brown. Uh, I was raised in North Aloha, which is right below Pohaka Loa. Um, one thing that I really stood out from this yes is how narrow it is. Um, what I first see is the statement of like how important it is for all of the missions in the Pacific and really worldwide between and then the impact statement is this very narrow 23,000 acres. And really, we need to look at what is the worldwide impact, um, island wide impact of this chain, um, the use of munitions that are going to be used to kill innocent civilians. You know, in 2022, we already know that um, civilians are. This poor, this poor, sorry, they're overly killed in, uh, in war. And that is 
a burden that we carry on this island that we're training to kill people um, around the world. That's something that should be looked at as a psychological impact, not only to civilians here who, who know that, but also our troops who are going to face probably PTSD and you know, high rates of suicide. Um, you know, we talk about you know, EIS, you know, nanos that are impacting, like, can we maybe include the human nanos and the impact to us? Um, you know, I grew up with phone shaking my house. Um, I would say that the first big awareness of the world was watching 9-11 and then following that um, the propaganda for the wars in Afghanistan and mm -hmm. in Iraq. And if I was a little older, I probably would have signed up with you guys and thought that was the right thing to do. And I'm glad I wasn't that old. Um, because as I grew up, I met a lot of vets and what they told me of um, how it negatively affected them and how the war affected civilians in those countries uh, really changed my worldview uh, that we're not really protecting. And uh, thank you for giving me this time. Um, yeah, and that we should look towards our veterans who are for peace. Um, to start practicing diplomacy because it's time, it's 2022. We don't need to practice bombing anymore, we're really good at that. Um, and maybe we should start pay, paying our fair share for resources instead of starting wars for resources. There's no reason for us to not have integrity and pay people for their resources in other countries. We don't need to take them, we don't need to force them to pay. Um, or to give us low rates for oil or anything. Yeah. We're all adults here. We can afford, we have a 750 something billion dollar budget a year. We can reallocate that to better ways to work with other countries. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Aloha, my name is Asalam Karabea, A-G-A-L-O-N-P-A-R-A-B-E-A. -A -A. Um, I'm here to propose the continued renewal of the 2,000 acres of land. I had the privilege of working at Kohaku Loa Training Yard for three and a half years until last spring. It was a very challenging job on a lot of different levels. I was working for the Research Corporation of the University of Hawaii for the Cultural Resources Program. It, the amount of work that we did up there was a lot, but it was all mostly just for these folks to check boxes. Um, much of the land that I worked on personally was within the state use area, especially in areas 18 and 22. I experienced there was a 1,000 acre fire that occurred in 2018 um, within the native plant habitat, and this is because of an accidental flare being dropped out of the helicopter. During the middle of summer, in the middle of the night, it took a long time for that fire to get out effectively. Burned a lot of native plants. It caused who knows what kind of damage to ecological resources in the area. Unfortunately, that particular area had not been archaeologically surveyed. We only went in there as a response to the fire, and that is a huge problem. And that is often, in my experience, what happens at full archaeological in the area. Things are not assessed until all of a sudden they might have been damaged. Nobody's going in and checking these areas in advance. 
and this is not a shortcoming of the research corporation in order to want you to shortcoming in the military. Our student doesn't even have the PPP contract anymore. All of my coworkers, about two months after I left, effectively got fired. The contract was changed over to Colorado Environmental Management and Military Environment, which just suggests to me that the military does not take their relationship seriously with our community. Instead, they hire out to lower bidders, often bringing in people from outside of Hawaii to do work that is very culturally sensitive. I'm not from up in Hawaii, I'm not Hawaiian. I am a white person, I was raised in my Colorado village, but I take the culture here very seriously. I care a lot about the people that live here. Um, I know for a fact that there are Kukuna within these statements lands. Um, while saying that, I'm not going to have to worry about getting fired, <laughs> but that is the truth. And I strongly support, um, and he brought that up. You know, these are people that need to be given respect and be able to sit easy in their rest. Um, as far as our uh, environmental resources go, um, I am a, an avid lover of plants. <laughs> I'm just devastated to see how much damage has been done in this area because of training over time. Um, the plant communities that are suffering, I give a lot of credit to the natural resources program. Those people are the true hammers. Like they go in there and they do some heavy, heavy work. But an actual fire can obliterate all of that overnight. These things can't keep happening. This is not just human error. This is big human error. This is big military error. Um, I don't know if I can keep going. I do have a little bit more to say. Living in my world. Okay, yeah. Living in my world is also, I think, a lot about human health. Um, my mother is dealing with severe bronchial issues. It's not my reason. We're been breathing in this air my whole life. I would like to think that I'm breathing in fresh clean air. But now that I have worked this area, I literally see the dust from Pohokaloa, not anywhere else, but from Pohokaloa flying down to like a little village. A lot of the dust we get in our house is from this region, and it should be safe. But I worry about lead in particular, which not enough people are talking about. We know that that is in the first place of the litter of the landscape, the schmidt track, all of this just needs to stop. And the damage needs to be cleaned up before it goes back to the street. Mahalo. Mahalo, Mahalo. Thank you so much. Aloha, my name is Travis Ferry, and I don't know the number of our platforms to do as I was trying to run a package that I But uh, Travis Ferry, T A R A T D A, just like that. I'm just on comedy that I can call up. But um, <laughs> that being said, I mean, I could wax up here for a little while. Um, you know, when we talk about the value of Hawaii for the US military and US national security, it's, I don't think we should be having any conversation about. What have I yet to sacrifice for that? As opposed to what have I yet to give it? Like, so these lands up here are coastal lands of the ancestors of veterans of the US. Why is it fought in the war of 1812? Well, before I get to the US, they fought on both sides of the US civil war. I think they fought in pretty much every major American conflict since that. So this is not just a, that place between Hilo and Kona. And that's kind of the issue. Once upon a time, uh, was that, that island between Kauai and Maui. But if people learn more about it, they got out there, they found out what was on that island. The change right now, it's, you understand. So right now, I would imagine the vast majority of people on the island have no idea what's up there in any part of Papua, not just the parts that's up to the east or not, but the whole place. So it's kind of hard for us to understand its importance without the information coming out from it. So to get to the point, which is the environmental impact statement, statements like this one here on water resources, <clears throat> continued adverse impacts on water resources or ongoing activity, impacts would be less than significant. <laughs> that, that is what we call occupation, I think, in general, right? That's, uh, there's very little specifics on what's up there because when you become specific on what's up there, people will not 
you want to see it go back to being a target a target practice um, especially for water resources you know i mean i'm surprised it hasn't been brought up yet but i understand the army conducted a, resource, uh, uh, a water resource survey up there and they realized the water table is much higher than it is that the water table <laughs> supports more than we thought and that was another to be recent survey i'm sorry about the time on that but or the, the, when that happened but um and you know, I thought it was funny going to previous understandings about Buffalo Junior and re releasing these lands. And we hear a lot about the uranium, but oh, nothing about all of the land, which I feel like is a uh, topic of what I'll discuss as well. Um, um, yeah, I, I support giving no land back over after this lease. I have a hard time believing that the 22,000 acres will somehow prevent maneuvers on what is still a 110,000 acres society. I don't want to speak against your presence here. I think that you know what you're doing is wrong. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so fast. I can not even turn my mic back on. Mahalo. Number 30. Hello? Oh. War is a game of tic tac so Nobody wins. And development for the sake of development is the ideology of a cancer cell. You want more and more and more and more. And when is it ever going to stop? How about you guys doing some water catchment thing? Start catching water. How about you guys start feeding people? I have nothing against you brothers. I take issue with the powers to start wars and make you fight them. My godfather was a green bird in Vietnam. He died when I was five years old for the Asian Army Party. My uncle was a sergeant first cavalry in the US Army. I'm gonna tell you something straight up. I grow psilocybin mushrooms for veterans with PTSD. It's not your fault, brothers. I love you guys. It's time to end war. All right. Do we have a number 31? What is like it again? You can go to the station room and start up in there. Hello. Um, my name is Maya Lani, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I just think what matters is I went around and I read the post of stuff And yes, you do need training to go out and defend whatever war you attain to. Bottom line is we need three sources to survive air, water, and air. And by doing this up there, the training of light animation, it contaminates every source of this our air, our water, and that. And then we contaminate it. It goes into our water system. I believe you have enough training in Go back to Area 51 in Nevada. 
We have Schofield Barracks. We have Reader. We have Bellows Air Force Station, which is from Hawaii Home Care. We have Kauai, Land of Hawaii, Barking Center. And here are the Hawaiians. And we thought the uh, and we thought the Aina could be sustainable. And for years, many men had settled and women and children to get Kahoa Lava back. I have family evicted from Okawa. And we never got that. We got more clear case with fighting for that community foods. And after you both get up and leave, the contamination stays wherever. Our channels between our islands are contaminated with that mode. Ordinance and our life in our islands is dying. Our children are suffering. We had many cases of birth defects, brain tumors, brain cancer, blood cancer, leukemia. And it's contaminated because it travels through the air, dust travels everywhere. And I believe that it's time that the land has been taken back to be cleaned up and to keep it sacred. Obviously, no one can live on it. But we don't have to continue to contaminate and destroy and persecute our family. And that's all I have to complete my Mahalo. Glory, glory. We all go to more, we all need to move forward, but we all have to take our steps one day at a time and see what results can be done. That's all I have to say. Mahalo. 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 You have 32. Aloha, my Tafu. Okay, I got you for any couple of minutes because I'm more you know. Ono ho kiaukehe kona moko kiawe. Um, I was in one of the today, um, but I've listened to enough people and they've all brought up really good points. My cooking I have desecration of E, depleted uranium, lead poisoning, vine, our water table. You're poisoning our water. In 75 years, none of us will be able to live here. We will all be dead, and this place will be uninhabitable because we must have that bombing. And we're supposed to continue drinking that water. The same thing that happened was at Hop Hopi, it's going to happen here. The national security making us a target. There's a lack of transparency. It wasn't inspected for over 25 years. We know that our EU are there, we know cultural sites are there, but we don't have access to it because it's dangerous to us to go in because you guys are bombing it. So we're not able to go and inspect those places, but it's your Koreana to do so and you did not do it. And Mike is going to have to sue you guys to make that possible. What? Critical habitat. Are we, do we care about our birds? Hawaii is the capital of endangered species and extinct species. How many species of birds should I stop that have under 500 specimens left in the wild? It can name quite a few. Should you working on reforestation instead of pollution? What are the long-term effects? What are the long term effects of those things? You're just going to wipe out everything until you cannot. Yeah. Um, you should fulfill your contract, which is to prove me that. I know because I helped Malama Makua Valley over on Oahu, and they are not able to inhabit Makua Valley anymore. 
It was seized in the 1940s for World War II and they did live aerial bombing there. And nobody will ever be able to farm hollow there ever again because of fear of live unexplored organisms. You cannot farm there. You cannot dig into the Aina without fear of blowing yourself up. Yeah, I do actually have one question. If anybody in this room knows the answer, who's the cultural practitioner that helps to jack this EIS? Does anybody know? Because I don't, and it's not listed. Who is your source? Nanai Kekumi. Who are you referencing? There is cultural significance of Oahu Loa. It connects us to Pu'u Pohaku, Pohaku Loa Gulch that runs all the way down Mauna Kea. The water that is accumulated in Pu'u Pohaku drains into Pohaku Loa Gulch and then into Pohaku Loa. So we know that the light is there. You know, and mostly this is about our ability as Kanako Uyibi to continue living on this land. And I'm diaspora. I grew up in Seattle. I didn't grow up connected to this place, but my ohana is and has always been from here, Moko Kiawe. And now that I am back, my family will continue to be from here. And nothing will ever separate us unless you make it impossible for us to live here. And we will all be dead because of your inability to back away and say, okay, hey, Paul. We've been here for a little over two years, so I've been coming to the island since before it was a state. I'm old. I've watched the Arabs in the United States of America come up in quite a lot. Island and from that area, I've listened to women who come to King and spoke in Seattle about what they call jellyfish babies. To this day, that land is so contaminated with women give birth to babies that are flat ground with teeth and hair, and they breathe like going up and down, and then they die. Mm -hmm. And if I could take a step closer, the ears are in the Okay. And they call them jellyfish babies. There are people getting rich. There are people that are getting so rich over all the wars and all of the ordinances that have been dropping on the sun. It's beyond the comprehension to me that the US just goes on destroying land after land after land in the name of killing people. It's just one problem of in Cuba, we are occupying another country, not being spread out, but we don't lose. And the United States government keeps sending money for the lease every year and you know what Cuba does? It sends the money back to the United States and says, feed your own people first. We don't want the money. Um, it, it just there's so many examples. And this is that I couldn't believe it. I had no idea that my nutrient found out that one six of the island is this beautiful island that is just used for blowing up things. And I I mean it's a long way one there from this from there. And I sat up in the middle of the night with the boom going. That's what's going to happen. 
some of these may be money finding in all of our ordinance, we blow up and blow up, and then we have to pay across the pay to get more of it. So you can blow up. So whoever owns the, the military industrial complex and that he's getting to own our government. And if someone else says it's not your fault, it's the fault of whoever makes these absolutely horrendous decisions to do something meaningless to the people. Everybody else has done a better job of making it. Oh, wow. How many? Okay. Is there a number for the poll? Is that the one? Okay, so we're going to take um, about a 10 minute break for the poll. If you have not seen the poster, please go do so. And then if you have people who did not sign up and would like to testify, the people would like to go there and then you come back with you. Thank you so much. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three.
Test one, two, three. One, two, test one, two.
<laughs> Hello, everybody. We're going to get started. So I think we're done with the formal numbers. So if there's any, and I know Auntie Maxine wants to testify. So <laughs> if there's anybody else, but Auntie Maxine's going to go first. <laughs> well, what? Oh, he can wipe, he wipe them. He can wipe them again for you, Auntie. Go wipe them again. Yeah. <laughs> I never sign up. Yeah, so Auntie, but I can I I go yes. I go. State your name and spell for her. Oh, my name. My name is Maxine Kahaule Leo. K A H A U L E L I O. It means the man that fell off the horse. That's what my name is. You know, you guys talk about Kahoolawe. The name is Kohe Malamalama O Kanaloa. That's Kahoolawe. You're not supposed to put Kahoolawe. That's westernized. The shining vagina. That's what it is. Never be ashamed. When the white man came, they changed our names. All our names. I want to tell you folks, I am a warrior. In 1977, I got arrested on Kaho Olabe. I was one of them. I was 38 years old when I went on that island. And as we went, we went illegal. Our brothers from Maui gave us the boat to jump off on Obake Bay. There was 14 of us, eight women and six honey. And I was a grandmother already. And I swore that I was going on that island to stop the bombing. And we did. We did. Hey, but when I was there, I know I'm going to get three minutes. When I was there, brother, when I went to the top of Kohe Malamalama O Kanaloa, we were walking, following the goat trail. Because helicopters were watching us, yeah. And what I did, what Auntie did, is I picked up a handful of bullets. Bullets. You know what I did? You know what I did to the bullets? And one of my friends said, Auntie. No, pick them up, get radiation. I said, screw the radiation. You see these bullets? Each of them, each bullet, Noi, could represent kupuna health, feeding our children, low income, building homes, building hospitals. And I picked it up and I cried on kaho olave. I did a bunch of bullets that represent our water, our kalo, our banana, you name it, our birds, all went to what? To destroy the very top of kaho olave, kohe malamalama o kanaloa, flap, no more the Before we went on the island, brother, I climbed an 80 foot cliff. And as we were climbing that cliff to go on the top of that 45 square miles of island, I touched the waterfall that's supposed to have been there. And all my hands touched was nothing. No water, no nothing. <laughs> this is what war does. This is what the bombs do. This is killing 
You know, that's what I cannot see. We, Kupunas, 38 of us, got arrested on the Mauna. Three, three years still in court. And all we did was sit on the road, our road, Hawaiian Homestead Road, and we got arrested. But the army and the military can bomb and kill people and they still can walk a line. They won't get arrested, but we did. We did, kupunas, 38 of us, for standing on the road for desecration of TMT. How is this? What is wrong with our system? What? Do I give you a gun to shoot babies in Ukraine? Would you take it from me if I said, go shoot one baby? What would you say, brother? No, right? Oh, yes. But you know what it is? That's my job. I got to do my job. We got to do ours, right? We got to say, stop the leases. No more military. Go home. We want to throw you guys a luau in 2029. The biggest luau you guys want. And then escort you guys out of our island and say, mahalo. Aloha wa oe. We love you. But aloha. Go home. Go home. Stop hurting our land. My land. Where do I go, brother? Where do I go to live if you guys are going to desecrate? Let me tell you something. In 1968, I lost my brother Bobby by friendly motor. My America killed my brother Bobby in Vietnam. How I found that out? Bob Jones. Remember Bob Jones, everybody? He was working for KGMB. He just died. He was interviewing my brother Bobby. Two years later, my brother Kenneth died in Vietnam. Machine gun down by a Vietnam. They shot my brother with a machine gun until it emptied. My brother. Is this what you guys want? Is this going to continue? God's Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Why? Answer me this. Is this your job? To go out and kill somebody else that you don't know? That's what my brother did. He was in the 25th Division in Schofield. Two weeks he got in Da Nang. The next day he was killed by American Motor. It busted all him. Sergeant Robert As Andrade. His monument is by the state capitol. Go see it for you guys. Self. My other brother is Kenneth Suarez Andrade. Sergeant Andrade for Amarillo, Texas. He was stationed there. Machine gunned down by a Vietnamese. He didn't know my brother. My brother didn't know him. But the Pentagon knew. But you think they stopped it? They didn't stop him from killing. Because that was his job. Well, you know what? I don't want you guys' job. You need to get another job. You guys do. Refurnish the island of Hawaii. Pohakuloa. You know how many heiaus in there, brother? And you know, we got to go in there. We do our, our ritual yatita every, every November, yeah? Our, our thing with uh, Leilani, yeah? While we go and study, we pray. We do our ahu. We put everything. The army, like my address... My, my license plate, this, that. I tell you what, you like my measurements too. We no can go inside there. Our own land. Our own land to practice, to pray. 
because the army said, no, you cannot do this. Uh, you cannot, no, 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 you cannot do, you cannot take it. No, 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 no. And only two of us can go in to monitor. Pu Ching and I, who is sitting there, we just won the Supreme Court. We just won for have you folks clean up before you guys do artillery, but you guys are not doing because why? I tell you why. I tell you why. Because you guys get Ed Case in Congress and you get Susan Case in DLNR, which is brother and sister. Hot at. That's not a conflict of interest. Damn right it is, but who gives a damn? Who gives a damn? Nobody does because it's Hawaiian land. And Ku said today, I said, Ku, why do you guys hate us so much? Why do you hate me so much? You know what Ku mm -hmm. told me? Because Maxine, you belong to the land. I belong to this land. That's why they hate us. Because they want everything that we have. Our land, our fishes, our oceans, our water, our mauna. What else do folks want? What else? You guys took it all. Fort Ruga, Fort De Rossi, Fort Shafter, Halekoa Hotel on a beautiful ocean, beautiful beaches. Auntie. You cut them our water. I was a little girl when I knew all these things are happening. Triple hospital. You know that triple hospital is the he'e? Auntie, I'm so That's the he'e. And underneath the hospital is where the tunnels are. They built the tunnels to put that diesel two and a half miles to go to Pearl Harbor. To fill what? Our destroyers. Your destroyers. The Pentagon destroyers. And what that fish? That was a fish pond. The greatest fish pond that Hawaii ever known, Pearl Harbor, fed the Ali'is, fed the commoners, and it's all gone. Oh God, because the military owns all our land. Do you know what, they don't own me. And I said today on TV, that if I have to walk in Pohakaloa, through the gates, I will, brother. And I don't give a damn if you shoot me, I will. And if I go and get arrested again, I'm going to do it. I swear to my God. It is enough. Go home. Go home. Leave us alone for crying out loud. Leave us alone. And let us get back to our land. We don't want your protection because you cannot protect us. I was four days on Kaholavi and you couldn't find us. The army couldn't find us. Why? Because we were in the caves with the goats. And they had the infrared. But they forgot the infrared no can go in the tunnel. Only like this. And we was like this with the goats. All stink, but that's okay. Because we swore we were going to stop the bombing. And in 1996, the colonel did this. I'm going to show you what the colonel did. In 1996 on Koholavi, here was the water right here. He had one foot on the sand and one foot on the land. He took his cigar and he threw it like this. And he said, hey, you damn Hawaiians, take back your land. He threw his cigar. On the land. Is that what you guys want to hear? We know. Because we were there. I, Maxine Kahale Leo, was a federal prisoner that got arrested in 1977. Handcuffed and everything. Took to Pearl Harbor. On your ship, through the Molokai Channel, two nuts deliberately to make us sick where they could have put us on a helicopter, take us 45 minutes to Pearl Harbor. But no, they never, they never. So I'm doing this for my two brothers. My two brothers who never came home because he had 
the United States Army on the same jacket you were wearing. And he's gone. Mahalo, Auntie. Go home, you guys. Tell your commander in Pentagon that the Hawaiians love you. We love you very much. And God loves you too. But you guys need to get the hell out of this place. Really. Call your artillery. All your firearms. All your rifles and your grenades and everything to kill people. Go home. You can tell Ed Case I said that. You can tell Ed Case and Brian Schlotz and all the damn stupid Congress people up there that stop killing you folks. That's my, my testimony tonight. Mahalo. Mahalo, Nui, Auntie. Mahalo. Mahalo. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Oh, okay. Um, okay, and you folks, wait, is there anybody who hasn't testified who would like to do so? Okay, I think we have time for a couple. Oh, you did? Okay, please. You just need to state your name and spell your name for the record, please. Mahalo. Okay, that, that was really powerful. <laughs> I'm trying to calm down after that. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, so my name is Carrie Wells. That's K-E-R-R-Y W-E-L-L-S. And um, I'm a citizen of Waimea. Um, I live uh, on the Pu'unani subdivision. And um, I have two children, two boys. And they're little, <laughs> they're eight and uh, 11. And um, when the training activities are happening, which I realize is not on the leasehold land, it's on the training range area, uh, the bombs, we can hear them from my house. Um, and it shakes the house. And my son cries, my eight year old, and he doesn't really understand what's going on, so I have to explain, you know, that uh, they're bombing. <laughs> and um, it's really, it's really concerning. And so um, I'm asking that uh, a noise study be conducted. Um, and I realize this EIS only covers that leasehold land, but um, I would really like a noise study conducted um, on the bombing activity that's happening. Um, I don't think a noise study was conducted for this EIS. And I know that what's gonna happen is that, uh, you know, the noise uh, study, if it's done in this area, we'll probably find that the noise contours are zero. So, <laughs> so I'm asking if there's some way, and I'm trying to think of a way to get a noise study done um, and I know that the noise contours would probably reach my house. Um, they shake, it shakes my house. And um, when the training is being conducted, which um, is a roughly every three to six months, and it's pretty much every day, day and night. Um, and that's, you know, every like two week period during the, that time. And then during rim pack, uh, that activity increases substantially. Um, so it would be great if that noise study could be conducted during rim pack activities. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's my, my main comment right now. And um, I really do appreciate everybody coming. I was hoping there'd be more people here. Um, uh, I work for NAVFAC Pacific um, and I'm in the environmental division there. And um, I do NEPA, <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's you know I, I wish there was more people.
because um, that's part of the process of, you know, EIS is, is the public being involved. So um, right now, this is my comment, <laughs> is just that noise study. Um, and thank you for letting me speak. And I really appreciate, like I said, um, lots of powerful speeches being made tonight. So thank you. Mahalo Nui, thank you so much. Okay, we do have some time for people who may have spoken and want to speak again. If there's not, again, if you've not signed up and you want to speak, please let me know. And if not, we have time for a few speakers to go twice. So maybe just two or three. So um, I saw your hands up. So, sir, why don't you come up first? Or, well, yeah, well, they'll both get to come up. Please just state your name again, sir. And then um, you'll have three minutes. Hi, it's Tom Penny, T-O-M-P-E-N-N-Y, and uh, thank you for all of your fine speeches. Um, very, very moving. Um, I had a friend who worked at the Pohakaloa training station as a civilian making pizzas for um, the people who were stationed up there. So he asked me one day, he said, Tom, have you ever heard of the Million Dollar Minute? And I was like, the what? And he said, it's called the Million Dollar Minute. And I said, no, what, what, the, what are you talking about? And he said that at the year's end, calendar year, fiscal year, whatever it is, if there is leftover ordinance, just strictly for the purpose of making sure the budget was there the next year, they blew it all up in one day million dollars worth of ordinance all used in a day or should I say in a minute which is why it's called the million dollar minute and by extension I just went into oh my god our tax dollars at work you know you're going to blow up a million dollars of ordinance in one minute just so your budget will match the one that you had the one before or even get raised to a higher level. I was stunned and I thought, hmm, yeah, roads, hospitals, um, public transportation, anything but that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir, if you want to come up again. Just, sir, for the mind, is there anyone else um, that would want to go again? Okay, um, we can do the two of you, and then I think we'll close there. Okay, um, you have three minutes, and then they can go again. Go ahead. Um, state your name again, sir, please. You guys know this song. Please sing along. Hawaii <laughs> Hanaway. I forget the rest. That's but you know what I'm trying to say. It's not the USA. <laughs> there was never a treaty of annexation. Hundred years later, all we got was a Bill Clinton apology for stealing our nation. You have 133,000 acres of stolen land, plus everything else. I'm from Kaneohe. I hear the whatever it is, the loudest thing at 12 o'clock at night. I had to move over here just so I could get a good night's sleep. We'll help you pack your bags. I mean, come on, you guys. Do the right thing. Mahalo.
Um, Alakai, do you want to come? And then we'll close with Tita. Alakai Kapanui, A L A K A I K A P A N U A. Um, it's not so much a statement or anything. It's more something for you guys to consider because in your clause, there's a clause in the land agreement that you have to restore the land back to its original state. And I want to know how you guys intend to do that. And I know you don't have an answer because I also know it's not possible. So in your pursuit of renewal of your lease or extension of your lease, I would like you to consider how much more damage is going to be done on top of what has already been done. Okay? How are you gonna put the rocks back? How are you gonna restore the hail? Are you gonna do all the oli, all the protocol to put our kupuna back to sleep? Do you know them? Because I don't even know them. I'd be impressed if you did. Would you like me to continue of all the restoration that's going to need to be done? Reforestation, like, it's just something to consider. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui. Did we have any new people come who wanted to testify? I just want to, you wanted, you, okay, you haven't testified yet. Please, please, sir, come. And then Tita will go after. Mahalo. Oh, Kalani. Hello. Aloha. All right. And just state your name as well. Mahalo. Hold on. E. E. Kalani Flores. F L O R E S. I wasn't on come tonight because we come to all these hearings and give testimony and nothing ever comes of it. So why even come? But I just turned on the computer and I saw Auntie Max. And I said, I gotta come down here and support Auntie Max and Kako, everything she said and everybody, everything everyone else said. And then if Auntie Max and Uncle Ku can be here, I better get down here and just support what they're saying. And Mahalo, and, and I, I'm sorry, I missed all the testimonies provided earlier in comments. We live in Pukapu Waimea, or Ohana Flores in case Ohana. And we've been to Pohakoloa a number of times. I've served on the, the Pohakoloa Cultural Advisory Committee for a number of years under various different commanders. I've been on the land, done practices on the land, and I know Pwakulo. I haven't had time to review that, that whole document, but from a quick glance at it, there's some things, problem, problems with the EIS. And it's not just this EIS, it's all the EISs that have been done. The, the Army for PTA has not done a comprehensive EIS for the entire activities happening at Oakaloa. You're piecemealing these EISs, and that's against the rules and laws of the and intent of an EIS. You cannot just do an EIS for just this land reauthorization. You have to do an EIS for everything you're doing on the property there, on the lands there. You're piecemealing this the EIS process, and that's, I know that's against the rules and the laws of the process of NEPA. I've made those comments a number of times for all your projects, not all your projects, but a number of your projects. You're piecemealing all these little EAs and EISs. You're supposed to do a comprehensive EIS for an entire area that you're using, not just this one little section. That's one of the problems with this, what I saw in the EIS. The EIS lacks a 
comprehensive cultural impact assessment. You guys have not done any, I, I read the ES, I mean, a cultural impact assessment. It's, it's incomplete. You just took a few reports here and there and you regurgitated and you treat it as a CIA. It's incomplete in this EIS. There's no oral histories, no cultural practitioners that have been consulted or included in that CIA. And this is not, this is not the first time, it's every time. You guys have not, and I say you guys, I've seen the army has not done a, a, an, a, any type of a, appropriate traditional cultural properties assessment for Puakoloa. There was some small little report done a few decades ago, nothing recent, and that even that report was inadequate. Uh, this is not new. I've been saying this for I gotta come again. Say the same thing over and over. And it's gonna be rubber stamped all the way through. We all know the process. But I came because of Auntie Max, I saw Auntie Max. And she said, Aunt Uncle Ku was here, so I better calm down here. The significance of Wakulo, if you guys don't understand. It's the center pico of this island of Hawaii, of this Moku Kiawe. It's the center pico, P-I-K-O. The energetic pico sits right in the middle of the island of, and right in within the area of Pohakoloa. There's energy lines that run east, west. They intersect at a, a pu'u called Pu'ukoli. The energy lines run from Ha'a'ena to Ahu'ena. And they go from north to south, these energy lines, and they intersect right at Pukoli. It's the pico, the center energetic pico of this island. And you guys are, and so what are you guys doing there? You're causing a, not just a physical destruction of the land with every time you bomb it, shoot at it, but you're also causing an energetic disturbance on our island that has far more repercussions than you can understand. And some of those, so you have physical disruption, destruction, desecration happening, but you also have the energetic disruption and disturbance is happening there. Every time you bring forces in personnel on the, on the lands of Pohakoloa, you're leaving an imprint, an energetic imprint of hate, war, and hostility on our lands. And you guys are responsible for that. So you're causing the physical and the energetic disturbance on the middle of our island, and it sits on the middle of a significant water aquifer in the middle of this island here. How do I know some of these things is from Ike Kupuna. Ike Kupuna, ancestral insight and knowledge given when I've been on the land of Poakoloa. There are Kupuna there, the divine beings and others there. They're giving us insight about this area of Wakoloa. And you guys have been mistreating it, destroying it, desecrating it, more than you can really understand. And I'm just here, it says, enough is enough. You cannot continue doing this on our lands. And it's not even our lands. It's the lands of the, of the creator of Keokua. I put these lands here and you guys are causing far, far more desecration and destruction that you can even put in your EIS incomplete report. So when I just hear it, says stop it already. Because you are accountable. Each individual is accountable for what you do. And now you know. 
And I'm just here once again. Enough is enough. We're going to stand for Pohakoloa and all this, in all the lands and to the ocean to protect what we need to protect because we as Kanaka have the responsibility in Kuleana to do so. And that's all I have to say for tonight. Mahalo Nui. And I want, I want, I'm actually, and this is a request now. I'm requesting that all your reports, archeological reports and surveys that have been done for Puakulor PTA area, all the natural botanical and, and biological reports be posted online so we can act, easily access these reports. There's numerous reports that nobody has access to. And if you're gonna do a e, these EISs, then the public should have access to all these reports and you should make them available online in some form or fashion. And that was, that's my request. Mahalo, mahalo nui. Okay, we're about, he'll be last. Mahalo, just let him wipe it up one more time. State your name again, please. My name is Shanti Brown, but I'm reading testimony for Kilihea Inaba from Kona. Um, she said, Mahalo. Spell her name, please. Just oh, yeah. K I L I H E A I N A B A. Um, she said, Mahalo for the EIS. Um, and some of her concerns for um, 3.11.6.1, alternative one, full retention. In regards to water resources, the EIS references Mink and Lao 1993 for the aquifer codes created that lists um, Anaiho, Malu, and Waimea aquifer systems as high level, uncombined dike impounded aquifers. In this classification scheme, both these aquifers are listed as high in their vulnerability to contamination as they are both unconfined. Though it states the salinity of groundwater is fresh, this study was done nearly 30 years ago and should not be used in this EIS to support the supposed low impact PTA has on these aquifers. A new and updated Updated studies should be completed to show that since 1993, there has not been any contamination of the aquifers. Uh, her second point is that the EIS states that approximate, approximately 11,920 acres have not been surveyed. In regards to both surveyed and unsurveyed lands, what people or kupuna have you spoke and are sat with to learn about what kaohe was used for by ancient Hawaiians? You should also note that the EIS states that 31 surveys have been completed and primarily have been generated from regulatory compliance needs associated with development in the region, yet Kanaka are the ones who should be consulted with. Uh, within TA22 site 23694 is situated within the sea lava tube cave system a sub subsequent sorry I can't read site visit by PTA CRM staff in 2003 documented uh, EV Kupuna site 23694 along with the artifact scatter containing lithic debitage debitage water worn stones and gourd fragments a circular shaped hearth containing charcoal ash and bird bone was also noted near one of the cave entrances. Uh, this is only one reference to a historical and cultural finding. Need I not say that there are more sites in this Ka'ohe Malka region that have either not, not been identified and not recognized in this EIS or have not yet been identified at all. Um, two other points out of the 14 sections that she's speaking to are adverse impacts related to land use, cultural resources, and transportation and traffic would disperse, dis, oh, do I have to stop? <clears throat> would 
disproportionately affect low-income and minority populations, including Native Hawaiians. The respected, uh, respective resource sections, however, indicated that the impacts would be minor or mitigated, and there was no indication that the impacts would be harmful to the health or environment of the environmental justice populations. Uh, the EIS then states this would not have or this would have a less than significant impact and does not have any potential mitigation measures recommended. Within the fine print of each of these sections, the reader can gather that there are a multitude of adverse impacts that would continue as a result of alternative one full retention. It is evident that continuing to use the state-owned land by the U.S. military displaces and again disproportionate this proportionately affects low income and minority populations, including Native Hawaiians. Her questions, how do any of alternative, how do any alternatives other than no action alternative benefit the people of Hawaii Island culturally, physically, spiritually, and economically? Also, as the DLNR is fully aware of the harmful impact that PTA has had, what would the US Army do differently that it has not done already to mitigate the adverse effects cause. The EIS references management measures to care for the land. Has any of that been done since 2008 when Hawaii County Council voted on a resolution 639-08 to have the Army stop all live fire at PTA and clean up the DU present? Uh, what has been done in regards to this? Um, she said, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Um, I heard a lot of people say, why are there not more people here? And one comment I have, um, so it was stated in the EIS that you all posted in newspapers three times, three different days. Um, I don't know anyone, I'm 32. I don't know anyone my age who reads a newspaper, like a paper newspaper, or probably even like has a subscription. Um, you have to pay for it. So that's a socioeconomic uh, effect of not being able to see when we have these events. Um, also that there were a hundred postcards emailed. I mean, you guys have a huge, huge budget. You could send a postcard to every single person on this island because we are all downwind and downstream uh, from this base. So please for the next um, EIS do appropriate um, outreach to get us here because the I guess it's not working the communication to get us out here is not working because I know a lot of people who would like to be here if they knew yeah mahalo nui thank you thank you so much so thank you so much everybody um I think Colonel Misagoy is going to remind everybody of how to comment but I know you took time oh auntie you never opened with a plea I'm sorry that's Okay. And we wanted to know, Kalani, could you do a call on it? Because we want them to be with us instead of again. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And that's on me that we didn't open with on. So I'm sorry. So Kalani, if you're willing. I'm not going to anything before we offer the pulley in. And thank you, Anthony Max, for just holding the ground and protocols and things as such. I'm not, I'm so, you know, the comments and things been directed against the army and the personnel, the military, it's not really against you folks personally. So we just want to make that note that it's just what the actions you're doing. So it's not, it's not against, this is not against the military or the army or the individuals who are in part of the army or the military. It's the actions you're doing that we don't agree with, not just agree with, but we don't, cannot, and 
continue to uh, condone. Yes. So we still have aloha for you folks, whoever you are. And that's the strongest gift that this island and the Kanaka and other people who are connected to this island have to offer to the rest of the world. That we have to offer aloha and the peace and the lokahi to all the world so that there is no war, that we can live in harmony with each other and live in harmony with the land and the sky and the heavens and the oceans and the waters. So this is what the puli is for, to have aloha for all. And that we plant the seed of peace and maluhia and lokahi amongst all. And that we all walk in a way that we are mindful of what we do to keep harmony with all things. And that's what the pull is going to be. No, like that, I care. No, no, Marco, we put you make a new make a man of a no tato. Mahara new ya, Paolo, we put you make a malo here, a colocahi, and make a law, and make a man not there too. No, like that, Piri no tato, Paolo, make a law, and a kind of a law, no capoya, Paolo. No, like in a pico luna, wine or lado, we put you make a locahi, my wine not tato, Paolo, make a law new. No, like in the mere. In a mere ino me have I know Yoko Kia Huyana, a Kalamaino Marco Okino Kiaramaika, Okino Kapilikia, no lighter hoi pui, make a lokahi, and make a roha valino. Makao wake, a kipapa no mokupu, a Kalamaino Marco, and a heaven no kiaina no ke heaven no a Paulo. No lighter Kalamaino Marco, ho inoko Marco Hali, make pilikio ole. In huipu, in lokahipu, me ke aloha, no kaina, no ke aloha, no me a paoloa, no me iki, te me nui, no ke aloha, ke akua, ka mana loa. Mahara nui, no kuyana, ara no tato, a mama, ua noa, pa i kalima. Pa i kalima. Pai Kalima. Aloha no. Ladies and gentlemen, just mahalo for everybody coming out tonight. Really appreciate all the comments. Um, just a couple of closing comments. So I know there are multiple questions asked. So the way the public meetings for the EIS is hey, those comments, those questions are going back into the, into the EIS and those will be, uh, those will be addressed there as, as appropriate. I do wanna highlight for, for those here today to, to share as well as for those listening on YouTube. So a couple ways to, to comment. So the comment period is still open through the 7th of June. We've got the phone line that's still open. So phone line's still open. Phone is, uh, you can record your comments, 808-470-8884. Eight, four. That's open, I believe, till midnight tonight. You can send an email at atlr-pta-eis at g70.design, or you can send us a letter, pta atlr eis comments at P.O. Box 3444, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96801. We still have forms that you can fill out over here as well uh, and mail to us. And then as well as you can look at our website, uh, that is uh, home.army.mil slash Hawaii slash index 
dot php slash pta eis 